Hi friends, it's Veronica Vax, naturopathic physician, happily retired. Today we are going to talk about acid and H. pylori. People ask me, should I treat GERD because I have uh, H. pylori for several times? I don't know, maybe forget about the whole deal of this H. pylori. The answer is no. You have to eradicate H. pylori. This is the standard treatment, no matter which medicine you are looking at, allopathic or naturopathic. In this video, we will talk about natural treatment for H. pylori. So I will talk about herbs, herbal effect on H. pylori, supplements to protect stomach, and what you can do after the treatment. So the goal is to eradicate. For many years in allopathic medicine, standard treatment was triple, so-called triple base uh, therapy, PPI plus two antibiotics, usually clarithromycin and amoxicycline. Amoxicycline also could be substituted with metronidazole. New problem arrived maybe 10 or 15 years, and it's called antibiotic resistance, means that effectiveness of antibiotic is not there. So many people get treated, but H. pylori is not eradicated. Result, the new medication was added to this regimen called bismuth. So now the standards of treatment in allopathic medicine, bismuth, PPI to antibiotics. Um, we need to say a few words about this uh, bismuth medication. First of all, it's uh, sold over the counter. The second is it's quite mild medicine compared to PPIs or antibiotic. The next is it has very mild antibiotic-like effect. Also, it will decrease or prevent adhesion of H. pylori to the, uh, to the um, lining of the stomach. So the stomach is the sac and uh, H. pylori, we get attached here. So it will decrease chance of adhesion of this H. pylori. And also it will interfere with several chemical processes of H. pylori. I need to say a couple of words about it. People don't like somehow Pepto-Bismol. Uh, I, I had many patients, they were complaining like, um, I have to take all these medications plus Pepto-Bismol. Pepto-Bismol is taken every three to four hours. It's a lot, except maybe when you are sleeping. It's a lot. As a result, people get overwhelmed. So you have to take PPIs. You have to take two antibiotics. Then you have to, every three or four hours, you have to take a Pepto-Bismol. So it becomes a problem. So uh, that's, uh, that's about Pepto-Bismol. So, but, uh, you know, I like it. And now let's go and talk about natural treatment. So here on the left, you can see allopathic med med medications. So two antibiotics, what you do, you substitute them with two or three antibiotic-like herbs or supplements. PPI substitute with zinc, bismuth is just take it. Also, I usually used to add into regimen uh, other herbs such aloe, aloe vera, slippery elm tea and marshmallow tea, probiotic and immune stimulating or modulating herbs. Let's talk about the treatment. So here is a few um, possibilities for you, herbs that have uh, supplements that have antibiotic-like properties. Golden seal was my favorite and probably one of the strongest herbs that has antibiotic property. Keep in mind, it's endangered herb so if you decide to go with that, make sure that you really use it. Don't throw that out. You can substitute with oregano. Allicin comes from uh, garlic. Some people would consider uh, or ask me, can I just eat garlic? The answer is not exactly because garlic, if you eat that, it will actually may irritate your uh, stomach and create more problems. So it's probably better to take in form of allicin. Licorice root, absolutely love it. A salt in form of DGL, or also herb, <clears throat> herb called Glyceriza grava. It has two effects on our body, two main effects. One, it has antibiotic-like property. The second, it uh, will prolong lifespan of your own corticosteroids, meaning that it will decrease uh, overall inflammation in the body and hopefully will decrease gastritis. Mastic gum in small studies show that um, eradicated H. pylori 100%. Ginger roll comes from ginger. People ask, should I eat just ginger? The answer is no, not enough. So it's uh, again, like allicin, probably better to take in form of peel. Green tea extract, manuka honey and 
pro propolis. Manuka honey is made out of um, herb that called manuka. And when bees are collecting uh, pollen, uh, they collect the pollen from this uh, plant and the pollen will have antibiotic properties. So make sure that it's really manuka honey, not something else. Uh, PPI substitute with zinc and bismol, peptobismol is just take it. Now, let's talk about other herbs that uh, would be prudent to add to this regimen. Aloe vera, probably one of my favorite. When person have H. pylori, they will develop a gastric ulcer or severe gastritis that will be seen on um, endoscopy as um, redness in the stomach. What that means is H. pylori damaged the, inside the lining of the stomach and aloe vera, and it will be like red and inflamed, right? exactly like in this picture. What aloe vera will do, it will go and pre create um, mucus-like lining and will protect it from a damaging effect of hydrochloric acid because the moment you put the food into your stomach, but stomach will start to produce hydrochloric acid. And this area that are exposed that has no protection, they will be red, it will be painful, and patient will complain about the pain. Um, aloe vera has um, um, uh, latex-like substance. I just said it and I saw it about it. If person has allergy to latex, aloe vera is probably no, unless you can find a company that uh, that will state on the bottle that um, it has no uh, this this substance substance. So maybe it would be if you have the uh, allergy to latex, it's with latex. It would be prudent to substitute with slippery elm or marshmallow tea. Will have similar effect. Probiotic. I have a video on this topic. Please uh, see on. A probiotic and prebiotic. People often ask me, should I take probiotic during the course of antibiotic or antibiotic-like herb? And the answer is, it depends. What that means is, if patient, a person will complain and say, hey, listen, the, the, the day I take antibiotic, I either have a massive diarrhea all the time or constipation. And if I take probiotic, it seems like it's not as... as um, is, uh, is complicated. So for this kind of people, I take, I say, yes, take it and make sure to take it in between. What I mean is suppose you take antibiotic. The, um, so let's suppose you take it uh, six hours apart. So six and the next six hours. So you take it smack in the middle. So three hours after you took antibiotic. And then you have a you know next three hours before you take the next uh, dose of antibiotic because antibiotic will kill bacteria, include the bacteria that comes from probiotic, you know, good bacteria. They neither antibiotic nor herbs, antibiotic like herbs will differentiate between bacteria, good or bad. They will just kill it. So take it with your. Uh, antibiotic and then make sure that you will take extra one month to try to repopulate the digestive tract with the good bacteria. Now, immune supporting herbs or immune stimulating also depends, It's as I said here, op optional because um, if person would complain to me and say, hey, listen, every time somebody in the household or neighbor get, get a viral infection, boom, I have it. So a person is susceptible or person will have autoimmune condition. So these people, the, their immune system already under great stress, right? It's already kind of working all the time, try to deal with chronic inflammation. So I would never give these people immune stimulating herbs. I would rather give, give them immune modulating, which means that the herb will keep immune system from going too high or going too low. Okay, so that's modulating. If person would say to me, well, I'm generally healthy, but you know, have this H. pylori, um, I said, well, probably it's a good idea to take uh, immune stimulating herb. So that's it, guys. If you have any questions, please ask me here, uh, subscribe, all relative information about the herbs and research on the topic of herbs and uh, standards of treatment of H. pylori is in the description below. Thank you very much. Bye-bye for now.